has created a team from nothing. Williams' place in the history books, that's guaranteed. Been there, done it, won it. All of that is history, though. It's a star, Father Williams! Now, we've got a different story to tell. A story of raw talent, unfiltered ambition, and real racing. This is our story. Only we can tell it. And the next chapter starts right here. The beginning of our next great adventure. Oh, that looks insane. Super cool. This is our time, your time. Our greatest races are yet to come. History made, history in the making. Now, Williams is a team which needs very little introduction. After all, it is one of the most successful in the rich, storied, almost 75-year history of the Formula One World Championship. Today, Williams is a team very much on the rise, with its stated aim being to return itself to the sharp end of competition in this most competitive of sports. Now, a new season represents a new chapter for any team and we're going to be focusing on that today. So let's take a little look at what's coming up. We'll catch up with Williams Racing drivers Alex Alban and Logan Sargent. Check in with this year's Academy drivers who are all looking to follow in the footsteps of Williams legends of the past. Team principal James Vowles looks back over his first 12 months leading the squad and looks ahead to what we can expect this year. And of course, today is all about getting that first sight of the new look Williams 2024 livery. Williams has always been about racing and at the heart of that racing story are the team's racing cars. And we know why you're all here, so let's not waste another second. It's time to take a first look at the 2024 Williams racing livery. The FW46 livery sends the message of what Williams Racing is all about in 2024. Respecting the team's past, but creating a new ultra-competitive future. The ever-evolving livery features a vibrant colour transition from new era Williams to heritage navy blue. Back come the iconic red and white pinstripes around the nose, inspired by the historic Williams machines of the 1980s and 90s. No wonder that Komatsu were back as a partner for the first time since the 1990s. They join MyProtein, Gulf Oil, Duracell, Kraken, Stevens, Puma, and Vast Data, amongst others, on this iconic team's journey back to the top. And I've been joined by 2024 Williams Racing drivers Alex Alban and Logan Sargent. Guys, how about this new livery? Looks great. I love it. I think um, subtly evolved over last year. Um, got a few more sponsors on, which is always good. It looks clean. Blue. Uh, blue. But blue was to be expected, <laughs> I have to say. If it was anything other than blue, I'd have been worried. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I think it looks really good. Clean and normally clean means fast. So uh, we'll go with that. Hopefully we'll, uh, we'll make that happen. Alex, you had an outstanding year in 2023 and you've personally noted you believe it was your best season ever in Formula One. What are your reflections on last year? Um, thank you, first of all. I, I would say more than anything, a little bit more confidence, a bit more experience. It always goes a long way and um, more chemistry with the team. That first year is more about you know, learning the team, learning 
what the car's like, they've got to learn what you're like, and then that second year, it starts flowing a little bit better. Um, hopefully there's more of that, you know, looking over from, from last year, looking at areas to improve for this year. Um, there's always opportunities to, to improve, and then also trying to understand what this, what this new car's gonna be like. I think it's gonna be such a big difference in, in driving styles than just generally, um, hopefully, performance. Um, let's see. Logan, Formula One has, uh, I think, inarguably, never been more difficult for rookie drivers to, to come in, but your progression was astounding. What did you learn through 2023, and how did you change your approach throughout the season and into this? I think, for me, just to have had a year under my belt now, all the things I've learned, um, made steps forward throughout the season, um, now have a reference for everywhere I'm going to go is, is such a huge advantage going into my second year, and I think you know, Alex touched on it, this car is going to be very different to last year and uh, it's important to get on top of that as quickly as we can. But I think having that break in the off season to really sort of get myself in the right place physically, mentally, emotionally, um, start to reflect on, you know, the places I could have been, you know, a lot better um, last year to, to ultimately make that step that I know I can make. And um, hopefully leave us in a good position for 2024. What are your expectations of the, of the 46? And is it a car that suits your driving style? Are you gonna to have to adapt yourself to it? Yeah, for sure. The driving style will need a change, but I think you know, we're already starting to do that on the simulator and um, it feels like a, a nicer car to drive. Alex, I know you mentioned a lot last year, the predictability of the car. How did you find driving last year's car, but then also having to develop this year's car in the sim mm. and your expectations of that again, like Logan for this season? It was tricky actually last year because we were so focused on the championship to try and finish P7, so we couldn't let it go too much, you know, on, in terms of sim work, too much into this year because we, we still wanted that P7. So yeah. it was split and of course, as the year went on, we started to really almost only focus on the, on the 46 car. But, you know, we've got some great simulator drivers as well who are doing a lot of the, the, the background work. And every time we've been jumping in since Christmas, um, seeing and ticking along and seeing the progression of the car. It's been really fascinating to see. We don't really know until we um, hit the ground in Bahrain, but generally it's, it's been a, a good car to drive. It's impossible to say now. I know, we're not at testing yet. You haven't driven the car for real. But Logan, Alex, have the team set any objectives for the year? Have you set yourself any personal objectives for the year? I think personally the objectives honestly always you know, stay quite similar. It's, it's going to be about, of course, taking a step forward for myself, but at the same time, just maximizing the package, being consist more consistent, and um, trying to do that for the duration of the season. Yeah, there's a couple of things, personally speaking, I want to try and improve going into, into this year. I think every driver is. There's always room for improvement somewhere. And then for the, for the team, it's, it's, it's just to wait and see. I feel like every team's going to make a big step. Um, everyone talks about numbers and how many how many points they've added on and how much quicker <laughs> they are from last year. Um, it's all comparative, so let's see, let's see how we fare against everyone else. But, but we've definitely done a good job. I don't want to talk a big game too early, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but let's see. For both of you guys, James Files has now been at the team a little under a year. How do you feel the team has progressed under, under his leadership and, and you both as, as drivers, how much have you been able to draw from him as a, as a team principal? I would say, first of all, this without put it, I don't want to put pressure on James, <laughs> but it, it is his first year where he's really taken control and you can really see that. I think over the last four or five years has been an inherent way that the team and, and the car's been designed. And I think this year there's, there's been a, quite a big divergence to that. I think that's why you're hearing us talk about the car being so different. We're taking more risk and we're trying to, to get away from our, our old ways, old habits. So. Mm it's definitely the right thing we're, we're doing and it's just betting, seeing if it's, if it, if it's gonna work out okay. Yeah, I think it's been great to see. I think, as Alex said, um, he's definitely put stress on the system and I think in the end of the day, that's how you grow as a, as a whole and as a team. And personally speaking, he's been great to work with uh, for the past year and I, I really feel like I can see the team more motivated than ever to, to keep improving and get back to the front. Lovely stuff. Best of luck to you both in 2024.
Now, as these guys mentioned, one of the most positive and I think talked about news stories in 2023 was the appointment of James Vowles as team principal here at Williams Racing. And back in December, we caught up with him at the team's factory in Grove to look back over an eventful first year. Williams Racing have just announced that James Vowles will be their new team principal. The main emotion I remember is one of, of pride. This is everything. It's my hobby, it's my passion, it's my life. This job represents me as an individual. I go to sleep thinking about it, I wake up thinking about it, I wake up in the middle of the night and make notes about it. I came from Mercedes, which has really everything you could possibly want, and then some, to Williams, which is driven by an amount of passion that, that drives me even now when I speak about it. It's a racing organization, but without some of the infrastructure, a lot of the infrastructure, in fact, that, that I was used to. Williams as an organization wants to be back at the front. It knows the legacy that's powered it. If you walk around the factory, it won't take you long before you come across 10, 20 individuals that will tell you their life story and you realize how interconnected it is with Williams. <laughs> the challenge I set out was first and foremost, let's do our utmost to actually unlock a little bit more money for this team to move forward. The second was, let's try and capture some of the low-hanging fruit of perhaps what we're not getting the most out of this package with at the moment. Everything else was about how do we move this team large chunks forward in 24, 25, 26? How far do we push the boundaries of what we're doing without hopefully breaking the system to the point where we get ourselves in trouble? And it's finding that right balance and that's the journey we're on today. I remember still walking into the pit wall just before qualifying and having a, a chat to the team at the time. And they said, just, just prepare yourself. It's tough when you see that you're struggling to get out of Q1. And I was more optimistic than that, but they, they, they gave me the preparations for it. When obviously we did far more than that, and not just that race, from those races onwards. This year was actually about just pure fundamentals. Get it right, and you can pick off a point that's available to you here and there. And about halfway through the year, just race after race, we started to deliver points. If I had to pick a highlight, it would be Silverstone, when we finished seventh with a queue of cars behind us. But a home Grand Prix with the livery on the car, with Alex doing a brilliant job, the team doing a brilliant job, everyone just delivering where they had to in front of a home crowd that was cheering in the background. That sort of memory, I, I hope, will stay with me for the rest of my life. Everyone can look back and be proud of what we've achieved in the last 12 months because it, it is a large achievement. It may not seem it on the outset, but it's the start of our journey together. And more importantly, the outside world reflects on Williams not in the same way as for the last five years, which is they're just here to participate. They're here as a serious competitor that want to move up the grid relative to, to everyone else. They're investing in the right areas. It's, it's a change in momentum, a change in guard. They just reflect back and just look with pride of where we've moved from and where we are today. And now James Vowles joins me in the studio. James, welcome. Hi, Will. Um, we've just watched you reflect back over 12 months with the Williams Racing team, but looking to the present, tell us what you think about the FW46 livery and your first team launch here at Williams. I'm really proud of what the team has done in, in a number of aspects. First and foremost, Look at the car 12 months ago and look at the car today. Look at the, the amount of top brand sponsors that are on the journey with us. And that for me is a, a real boon and a suggestion of direction of travel that we're in. The second element of things is when I look at the livery, it's sort of got this really nice um, progression between the blues, which for me signifies where we have been and where we're going. It's got a nod, which is subtle in there, but you will see it back, back to Frank and back to our history. It contains for me the history of what the team is, a signifying elements of where we're going, and then just really some top class sponsors that are a part of our journey. 2023 was Williams Racing's best season since 2017. Seventh in the Constructors' Championship, an amazing result. How do you plan on carrying that momentum through into 2024? It's harsh as it sounds, proud of what we've achieved, but seventh doesn't mean a tremendous amount to me. We've done, we've done a good job, not a great job, we've done a good job. Here's what excellence looks like. And here's the gap that we've got to fulfill between those two. You're not going to do it in one year. That's simply just not possible, but we will get there. And we will get there because the perseverance, the belief, the passion is at the highest level I've ever seen. And that carries you through a tremendous amount. What are you most looking forward to then in 2024? I mean, right now, 
Um, I can't wait for the, the sound, the smell, the feeling of when you stand behind the car and you watch it drive out the garage for the first time at Bahrain. The feeling is like none other. The significance of it is that you're taking about 12 months worth of work. That's what it is nowadays to, to start your design process and build your car. You're looking at that and you can sum it up in just a few seconds. That's the hard work of nearly a thousand people being brought down to a few seconds. And that's what I'm looking forward to being a part of that again. Excellent stuff. Uh, the Williams Racing Driver Academy has been in full force. Can you talk us through the importance of the academy yeah. and what it means for the future of the sport? It means a tremendous amount to me because myself, I was a graduate, whatever, 25, 30 years ago, came up through the ranks. And when I watch it, young drivers are no different to that. They're individuals who will give you everything that they can. And if they're good enough, you, you feel almost like a father in regards to that because you've brought them up from 11 or 8 at the early age of things into Formula One. So it means a lot to me. Same for Williams. If you look at Williams and what we stand for, we stand for, for creating an environment where we are bringing through new generations of individuals, be that into the engineering world or as a driver. And it's what I stand for, it's what our team stands for. What I really like is if you go up and down our ranks, all the way down into karting at the moment, we're starting to fill what I call the pyramid of motorsport. And we have really exciting talent all the way through. I'm excited by what the future brings. James, thank you so much uh, and best of luck for 2024. Now, as mentioned, Williams has always given young drivers their big break in the sport. Uh, and this year, the Williams Academy is bigger and better than ever, supporting drivers from grassroots level all the way through the motorsport ladder. So let's find out what one of the Academy's youngest is up to this season. <laughs> My name is Alexander Bondarev. I'm from Ukraine and I'm racing and karting in the, in the OK class this year. I was a big fan of the movie Cars since I was three. So yeah, I think that's the main thing that got me into racing. Last year I was racing in karting also, but in the OK J class. The year went great. I managed to win the European Championship with the Team KR. This year I move up to the OK Senior class. The speed we have is great. I already got two wins so far. So I think we have a very strong season. And I'm delighted to say that I have now been joined by Williams Racing driver, Indy NXT driver, and F1 Academy advisor. Did I get that all in and I right? I think so. Brilliant stuff. <laughs> Jamie well. Chadwick. Um, Jamie, we've just seen 14-year-old Alexander, who, of course, uh, has been competing at international level in karts. We all know how competitive and how important it is to start your career in karts, but also the importance of having the, the allyship of a, of a Formula One team. How critical is that? Absolutely, and I mean, I think seeing Williams getting involved in the junior ranks and now karting is fantastic to see. Um, when I joined the academy, it was only me, and it kind of evolved and grew into more, but now to see how many drivers we have in the academy, and like you said, in karting as well, it's, it's fundamental, and I think their career development is going to be massively benefited from that. And the Williams Academy is, is growing by the day, by the week, uh, recent announcements uh, that Alessandro Giusti uh, has joined the programme along with 13-year-old carter Sara Matsui. And they will be joining another driver who will be making her debut in the F1 Academy Series in 2024. I'm Leo Block and I'm a Williams Racing Academy driver and I'm racing in F1 Academy this year. Last year I was racing in the US in Nitro Cross. I also raced karting, I did Pikes Peak, I did the Baja 1000. My highlight of last year was winning the ARA Rally Championship in the US. It's something that I've been working towards for a couple of years now and to get that done in Dusted was really cool. This year I'm debuting in single seaters. I've never raced this type of motorsport, so it's gonna be really fun. It's gonna be a big challenge, but I'm ready for it. Jamie, as an F1 Academy advisor, I feel like you're the perfect person <laughs> to talk about Leah and the, the huge job that really stands in front of her this season, the transition for her into single-seaters. What kind of a task lies in store for her? It is a task. It is going to be a challenge. Um, but I think what's great about Leah, she is young. She's very excited about the opportunity. And it's a huge opportunity that she has here with F1 Academy. So I'm really excited about it. I've worked with her a little bit so far. I've seen her in action in a rally car. And if that's anything to go by, I think she's going to be in a good place come the first race. My role is going to be particularly mentoring Leah. I feel like I've been through a little bit of what she's potentially going to go through um, this year. So I'm excited to sort of use a little bit of my experience to help her where I can, but also just yeah, enjoy watching what is going to be quite a revolutionary year for women in the sport. 
really hope it will be. Absolutely. And of course, uh, for the champions of F1 Academy, the hope to step up, to progress through the ladder and the natural next step would be Formula 3. Uh, and let's see who will be representing Williams Racing in that championship in 2024. My name is Luke Browning, I'm a Williams Racing Academy driver and this year I'll be racing for high tech in Formula 3. During winter break we ventured down to Middlesex University and we got put through our paces. After the couple of days were over I needed some good sleep, you know, I think I slept about 10 or 11 hours after that. My body was crying but I feel really well prepared now. Being a member of the Williams Academy is the most special thing about my career. Having the opportunity to shoot for the stars, having the, the faith of, of both Jameses behind me. Everyone in Williams now has a vision and sees where it's going, and I want to be a part of that. Jamie, F3 as a preparatory series is critical for a driver's development and hopes of making it to Formula One. What are the unique challenges of that championship? I think the tough thing about F3 is you almost need to be the finished product by the time you get there almost. You know, there's not much room for development. You're going in at a really high level. You're racing on the F1 circus. You're got to prove yourself you've got sort of a very short window to prove it so looking at a lot of these drivers they've got to come in and be on the money straight away almost and what do you think Luke's aims for 2024 will be is it a year of learning is it gunning for the title I think it has to be gunning for the title I mean he finished off the year last year winning Macau which is something as a driver I think everyone can dream of and I take my hat off to him it's an unbelievable achievement but with that I think comes the pressure of putting your name at the top of the list to try and win the title. So I wish him the best of luck in that. Absolutely. And we all agree with that. Um, F1, of course, is the ultimate goal of any racing driver. And the Williams Racing Driver Academy has two drivers tantalisingly close to the pinnacle of the sport. They will both be racing this year in the Formula 2 Championship. I'm Zachary Sullivan from the UK. And this year I'll be racing with ART GP in Formula 2. Last year I was racing in Formula 3, I finished second in the championship, so quite a successful season. Highlight from me last year, I would say, was competing in FP1 in Abu Dhabi with Williams. Any kind of opportunity you get to drive a modern F1 car is, is so special. Um, so yeah, of course, thank you for Williams for that opportunity. This year I'm stepping up to F2, obviously a rookie year for me. Uh, a new car also for everyone in the championship. Not too sure what to expect, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm Franco Golapinto from Argentina, racing in FIA Formula 2. Last year I raced in Formula 3. It was a tough year at times, but I think we closed the year very well. The main highlight of last year was, of course, the, the test in the Formula 1 car. It's been such a long time since an Argentinian drove a Formula 1 car, 20 years or more than 20 years. For me to be the first one again, it was, I think, a very historic moment, not only for myself, but for the country as well. Zach and Franco uh, have joined Jamie and myself here in the studio. Guys, great to see you. I would ask you about the season ahead of you and the new car, but I know you've only run a couple of laps in a, in a shakedown. So instead, I want to talk about F1 because you both got to run laps in an F1 car last year. How was that for both of you? Uh, it was absolutely insane. You know, since I was nine years old, when I started racing go-karts, my dream was one day to be able to, to drive a Formula One car. And to have achieved it already in my first year with Williams, we just started this journey. And to see that you know, your dreams are becoming true, it motivates you a lot to continue pushing, to continue improving. And it's an absolute pleasure to be part of the, of the team. Amazing stuff. Yeah, not too dissimilar for me, really. <laughs> I think rolling out of the garage, especially for me in FP1, was a, a dream come true, especially on the, the F1 weekend. Sharing the, the track with 19 other cars was was super cool but it's experience I'll I'll never forget and one I, I really really enjoyed and so for all three of you in conclusion how would you say this this team uh, has helped to supercharge your careers I like usually I joined the team back in 2019 and I definitely wouldn't be sat here um, or even in this position without them so I'm um, very lucky to be a part of the team very lucky to stay part of the team and yeah exciting to see you know how it's evolved and what it's going to become yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't be in, in this seat here today. I wouldn't be racing in Europe without William. So it's just amazing to be part of this process. And I hope we can continue for many more years together. We can continue building up a nice relationship. Uh, of course, thank you for the trust of everyone at Williams. And let's keep doing a, a great job. No, it means a, a huge amount, I think, as a British driver as well. Being with such a historic British team is a, is a big pleasure. Going into my third year now of 
with Williams. Um, as Franco said, I think being involved with an F1 team, being integrated from, from quite a young age gives you a goal, something to work to. Uh, and I think also from my side, you learn a massive amount working with, with F1 level people from quite early on. Lovely stuff. Boys, best of luck this year in the very new look F2 cars and Jamie's to you uh, in Indy NXT. Our best wishes go with you uh, across the seas to America. Uh, and that, folks, pretty much brings us to the end of proceedings for our launch. Uh, Williams, the iconic Williams team, is ready to take it to the next level in 2024. But this is just the start of the journey for this year. This is history in the making. Williams Racing will keep you updated throughout the season on their social media channels. So make sure you follow at Williams Racing and do download the app. For now, goodbye. <laughs>